Welcome back. Today is Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators. And today I'm going to talk about the movie Lockout. So this is going to be a short one that I was going to include in a FNA or when I talk about something where I can bring this up as an example. But I thought it's an interesting moment that warrants its own clip and upload, mainly because it talks about the character's thought process and their reaction before the character says something. So there are two things I want to show. One of them is that. And the other one is the kind of a introduction to the character and credit sequence type of thing, where I wouldn't say it's something that you could add in your animation per se, but it's something that you could potentially do on your demo reel, maybe with the credits or, or maybe you're working on a short where there's something you could include. I don't know, it's not super animation specific in terms of acting, but at the same time, it's something that you could use potentially. Again, my love of props where you can show changes in the character or just something for humor. That sounds like a really big caveat. So let me just show you what I mean. And then you can always let me know in the comments what you think about that. But I thought it was interesting and why not? Let's just show it. So as the movie starts, we get, of course, who does the movie, where are we in the time and everything. And that's your introduction to the character with a tattoo. And this starts, it's a very specific, okay, well, they're gonna light a cigarette. And this is fairly prominent. And the reason being is because it shows the, the degradation of the character, so to speak. So as we have, you know, information here, uh, and all of this continues. And by the way, I'm not sure if you really need the dialogue, but I'm going to upload this as a separate upload so you can hear what they're saying. And this is going to be listed in the descriptions. So it's going to be a link that's as always not public because it includes copyrighted material. So this is unlisted and only for you to watch and for educational purposes only. But as we continue, you can see here the cigarette untouched and he talks and then your the elements, right? So he says something gets punched out, which gives you a credit reveal also with overlapping stuff here. So I don't know, you know, this could be something where you could potentially have your first shot, whatever it is on your reel. And if something like that would be, then you could have, you know, your name, animator, and then the character comes back into frame. But then again, I, again, I don't really want to say that's what you should do because they always say don't have fancy title cards. Just do your title, your name, title, contact information at the end. Let me know who you are, what you're doing, and get straight to your shots and your demo reels so you can show me what you can do. Uh, and anything fancy might just be um, distracting. At the same time, I have to say, why not make it fun? I mean, you know, sometimes if someone reviews the demo reels all day during the day and gets to see the same thing, maybe something a bit more interesting, a bit more entertaining. I don't know why not. As long as it's not too long, not distracting, and you don't spend hours and hours and hours animating some crazy flying in logo type of thing, I can see that. But maybe something more interesting to start with, why not? I mean, you might as well set yourself apart. And if it's okay and it introduces the character in a funny way, why not? But as you continue, you can see here that you have this cigarette. And that's the thing that I was talking about before, where you have this gets punched and then off screen comes in. And it's like this, and this continues on. So as he, as he does this, there are more jokes, there are more things from the interrogator off screen. And he says more things that he's not supposed to say and then gets punched. And again, you got the credits and so on and so on. But you can see how he is bloodier and bloodier. So you have a nice cutout, makeup applied, and it comes back in. You know, maybe that is something that you could do potentially in your shot where, and you can make this very innocent. What if, I have no idea, I'm just, I'm just imagining right now. What if you have the character is like a gardener and is dealing with something where he has to clean or take weeds out, or there's a creature involved that destroys the, the garden. And imagine the gardener says something to someone like, yeah, I got to deal with this, this creature's here. Goes down, then you see flowers coming to the screen, comes back up and it's dirtier with like a flower hanging here. It's like, yeah, I'm almost done. Goes back in, more stuff is happening, head comes back in, more flowers and dirt and maybe a little squirrel on top of the head gets out. I mean, that's how I would apply it. So it's obviously not a punch all the time, but it could be something where you have a progression of a character and maybe the character gets more and more annoyed, but you can show that transition going in and off screen. I don't know, this could be fun or just loosely a springboard as always for people watching this to implement in their shot and their work and their sequence. But the other thing I want to show, and this is the main thing, all the other stuff is cool, it's interesting. You could try it out, but the thing that's to me more interesting in terms of acting is this moment. So as he's, <laughs> as he has more insults is this here. So that's his, one of his final thing. And then you get the, the credit here. Again, I'll link the whole sequence so you know what he says, but it's basically, he tells a joke, but the thing that I like is this. He already knows what he's going to say. Now watch his head, watch the little head wiggle. You got that all here. And then you got that expression, a little bit of a smile. 
So he already has an amused look and he's already laughing at his own punchline before he says it. Obviously, there's a bigger reaction here. But what I like about it is that when you have audio, just make sure that you don't always just animate to the audio. So when the character says something, that's when the emotion starts, do your lip sync, and then the audio ends, and then your character ends. Think about when your character says something, what's their state of mind? Are they saying something in terms of a reaction? So it could be something where they hear something, and actually that's gonna be something I'm gonna talk about for the Take Shelter acting in a couple of weeks. So your character might be doing something and listening, and another character says something that upsets your main character. And instead of just going, turning, whatever, and then have the audio go rah, 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 and that's the, the upset face with the lip sync. The character hears it and goes, what? And then it's that type of thing where the character really listens and reacts first and then says something. Like in this case, they're saying a joke. They like their joke themselves and they know it's going to be insulting and they already know what's going to happen and they're proud of themselves. So when you have a joke, you could, instead of waiting to laugh at the end, it could be, <laughs> and then you say the line. They're already thinking ahead of what's going to happen and they already know the punchline, they're already amusing themselves. And that's what I wanted to show with this clip. And in this, as the title comes in, he comes back. And after all of this, yeah, so what was the question again? So he's being a turd, continues on, and then it actually reveals who is asking him the questions and so on and so on, one of the main uh, antagonists there. And that continues. But that was that. So to me, it was something where you can show a character's progression with funny set pieces where like, you know, you know, like, like I said, with the squirrel and grass, but it could be anything, Come, could be someone cooking. And maybe it's a, a crazy scene in the kitchen. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm almost ready. And then you see like flour and dough or meat or whatever flies around. And there's more stuff on the chef's face as we go in and out. It could be all kinds of things. But potentially interesting if you want to apply a little set pieces and a little set animation. Imagine a guy comes back up or whoever and has, you know, dirt on their head and the flower and you got that drag overlap so you can kind of show more animation polish on top of your character. I think that to me is always kind of interesting but you know your mileage may vary. But the second part with the acting piece I think is interesting and it also shows more thought process in the character uh, so that you don't just animate what you hear and do the more obvious parts in animation. You can use that to really show that the character is thinking ahead or however they're reacting to another character saying something. Just the big thing that I feel is sometimes missing in acting work by students is is that it's just very, and I know they're struggling in terms of the technique has to be right, the arcs, the pops, I totally understand that there's a big learning curve in mastering the technical aspects. Then on top of that, you gotta put in the acting, I totally understand. But if you're more comfortable with the technical aspects, I think it's cool if you think about the character and their state of mind and what they're reacting to and are they, like I said, thinking ahead and just overall thought process. You wanna show that the character's thinking, processing things, reacting, that it's a living creature or human being that is aware of the environment in terms of other people around them, what they say, or like in the uh, acting analysis that I did for uh, Midnight Special, where a character walks up to another character not seeing that and then reacting, oh, I didn't know that you were here and reacting like that. So that type of awareness, and that could be through sound, could be spatial awareness, like I talked in, in that clip, all that stuff to me just makes the character come more alive. It's just something more to it versus just hitting certain beats and especially hitting certain audio beats where you just kind of do the lip sync and it's just, I mean, it's basically just lip syncing. So anything you can do to give that character more life and more awareness uh, and reaction and thought process, I think that can only uh, enhance your shot. And that's it, just a little, two little examples, but I think still one really important in terms of the acting piece. And I think the other one could be funny in terms of just an entertainment value and something to spruce up. And an extra thing, if you wanna do a different introduction to your demo reel, again, I'm not saying do that, because sometimes people are very picky about careful with the music, which obviously don't do anything annoying music wise, but careful how you introduce your demo reel, just don't do anything fancy crazy with credit it's flying in all that stuff, but why not have something that just makes it ever so slightly more interesting, entertaining? Because also think about the poor people that constantly watch demo reels all day, all day. So anything that you can do to entertain them on top of that and stand out from the crowd, why not? Yeah, voila, that's it. As always, if this was helpful, give me a like. I would love that. If you want to see more, subscribe and hit that bell button because I am uploading all the time so you don't miss anything. And if you watch the whole thing, those couple minutes, I think this was the shorter one. Still, I appreciate it. Those are valuable minutes out of your life. I appreciate it. And I will see you tomorrow for another FNA about animation blocking. Mm -hmm.